Hello everyone, Kalimera. Uh, if anyone requires translation, please grab your headphones. Um, very glad to be here today to represent ETSC um, at this very nice event uh, dealing with such an important topic, uh, vehicle safety. It's the second year we, we are here and, and we are glad to come every time we are invited. Thank you to the organizers and thank you to, to the Road Safety Institute Panos Milonas and Vasiliki for, for having us here. I will be um, saying a few words about uh, the European Transport Safety Council and our work in general before moving on to, um, uh, the, topic, uh, to the topic of today's presentation. So we are a road safety organization um, following a road, uh, scientific approach. We are based in Brussels, but we have a network of over 60 member organizations all across Europe. We get our expertise from our members, but also from more than 200 experts uh, with whom we cooperate on different projects. Um, our work is funded uh, from a variety of sources in order to maintain our independence. This includes the um, European Commission, um, our members, public and private um, institutions. This is an overview of our members. Um, we are happy to have two members from Greece, um, Panos Milonas and also the, the Hellenic Institute for Transport. Um, Besides monitoring EU transport policy and trying to influence this policy, uh, we also run several projects on different uh, topics of road safety. Our main project is the Road Safety Performance Index, also known as the PIN program, which ranks countries' performance on different fields of road safety and also monitors the progress towards the 2020 target of halving road date. Um, we also have projects on work-related road safety, on drink and dry drink and drug driving on young users and also a project that focuses specifically on vehicle uh, safety which is iSAFER um, standing for intelligence speed assistance for European roads and I will be talking a bit more about this technology that is being promoted um, through the iSAFER project. Um, we know there are more than 25,000 road deaths uh, on Europe's roads every year and uh, we add to that five times more seriously injured, all, um, often with life-changing consequences. Um, the levels of safety across the European Union uh, vary significantly. We, they actually vary by a factor of 3.5. We have countries with less than 28 road deaths per million, such as Sweden and the UK, but also at the other end, we have countries with more than 96 road deaths per million inhabitants, um, Bulgaria and Romania. Um, there has been significant progress in road safety over the last two decades, um, also triggered by the new measures introduced. However, in the last four years, there has been no progress whatsoever. Um, we see the dotted line representing um, where we should be if we would be on track to, to reach the 2020 target, and the full line shows where we are instead. Um, this, graphs also, this graph also shows the, the urgent need to introduce new measures um, that should follow an integrated approach. As we heard earlier, we should focus on the road user, we should focus on infrastructure safety, but we should definitely focus on vehicle safety. These this, this, uh, figures that I've shown would have been significantly higher without the, um, the measures that the EU has already taken to improve vehicle safety. This is an exclusive competence of the EU. And the last revision of vehicle safety rule, rules has taken place back in 2009. And when we speak about um, new vehicle technologies, we know that nine years is a very long period. With, uh, many changes and many new developments have taken place since then. Uh, ETSC has been calling the European Commission to, to publish the revision of the um, vehicle safety rules for a couple of years now, but earlier this year in May, um, we finally uh, saw the publication of the new proposal, uh, which would man mandate 15 new vehicle safety measures. Um, currently, there are several um, features, car safety features, that are covered by EU rules. 
This includes uh, seat belt, um, uh, child restraint standards, um, electronic stability control, and, and many others. This is a, a good illustration of all the, the EU covered um, safety features. Um, we also see in this graph that uh, the introduction of new vehicle safety measures has had a direct and significant impact on road safety. Um, the last measures are still being uh, phased in, for example, the um, automated emergency braking for trucks and buses um, and lane departure warning, these are still being phased in until 2023. Um, however, we observe again the, the platooning, the, the lack of progress, and, um, and the need for, for new safety rules. I would also say here that most of this improvement in road safety has been to the benefit of car occupants. Uh, the number of road deaths for car occupants has decreased much faster than um, the road deaths of other road users, such as pedestrians and cyclists. So there is a, a real need for more focus on what we call vul vulnerable road users. As I said uh, earlier this year, the Commission published the, the new vehicle safety rules, the proposal. Uh, these are called the General Safety and Pedestrian Safety Regulation. Um, they were published as part of a larger uh, package of safety measures, including new rules um, for infrastructure safety, also a communication on automation, and uh, the new action plan for, um, for the upcoming decade. Um, there are a lot of uh, measures being proposed by the Commission, as I already said. Uh, they cover all types of vehicles um, and they, they focus both on active and passive um, safety systems and they try to, to put more focus on um, those outside the vehicles, on the cyclists and on the pedestrians that um, are involved in, in collisions. You have a, a whole list here, and this is just the first page. Um, you will see that they are divided into different phases. Uh, most of them will be phase one, meaning that um, the date for implementation is three years from the adoption date. Uh, this is for all new types of vehicles, and uh, to this we, we should add two year, a two-year delay for all new vehicles. For phase two is uh, five years from the date of adoption, and uh, phase three, which we don't have here, there's, I don't see any phase three, is seven years. The whole package proposed by the Commission on vehicle safety measures, if adopted as proposed, has a huge life-saving potential. Um, it could uh, prevent more than 25,000 road deaths and 140,000 serious injuries in um, 15 years since the, the proposal would, uh, would be implemented. ETSC supports all of the measures proposed by the European Commission and asks the policymakers to, to mandate the package as a whole and not cherry pick among the different um, vehicle technologies. But during the years, ETSC has, um, has been advocating for, for several priority technologies, um, including overridable intelligent speed assistance, and I will talk a bit about this a bit more. Um, standard interface for alcohol interlocks, autonomous emergency braking with cyclist and pedestrian uh, protection, um, and more focus on, on pedestrians and cyclists to improve uh, test crashes and also improve direct vision. Um, I placed ISA at the top of our list of priorities because um, speed remains a very important uh, issue on, on Europe's roads, as we heard um, earlier this morning. It's not only a causation for, for collisions, but it also um, influences the severity of the injuries once a collision has taken place. What Intelligent Speed Assistant does is um, trying to, to help the drivers in complying with legal speed limits. 
There are se several types of um, ISA on the market at the moment. Uh, the one that ETSC supports uh, uses a combination of uh, GPS linked to a digital speed map as well as a um, sign recognition camera that uh, together would determine the exact location of the car and uh, the legal uh, speed limit on that section of the road. Um, the speed limit is displayed on, uh, on the dashboard and the driver is being helped to comply with this, uh, with this uh, speed by having a pressure on the accelerated pedal once the, the, speed limit, the legal speed limit has been reached. Uh, this will mostly help those drivers that um, speed involuntarily. So being an overridable system, this will not prevent those who, who want to speed from speeding because if, um, if, for example, if the, the technology, the system does not detect the, the correct speed limit, which, which might happen at the beginning, then the driver can push harder on the accelerated pedal and the system is being deactivated. Um, I have a very short video um, to explain how this, um, this technology works from our expert Oliver Karsten. I think I can. The impact on safety is that ISA is one of the most powerful, influential systems we can have to improve road safety. There are a lot of technologies out there, but because speeding and speed choice is so crucial to risk, ISA has a bigger effect than pretty much any other system. I'm driving now in the Ford Galaxy, which as far as I know uh, is the, one of the first vehicles on the market, apart from the Ford S-Max, to have a full intelligent speed assistance system on it. I've just gone through a change from 30 to 40 miles an hour on the speed limit, and that's shown on the dashboard. Happened almost immediately. So actually, if I push on the accelerator pedal, it won't go any faster than uh, 40 miles an hour. My speed limit is limited to 40. I touch the button, and now the limiter is disabled. The car just behaves like any ordinary car without the ISAP system. Switch it back on. I just hit that button once more. Now I'm told the speed limit is 40. Why is that useful to me? Well, it's useful because, as you can see, as I'm driving along, there's speed cameras along here. So this technology is already on the market, is available on different uh, types of vehicles. It would have um, a very uh, big impact on road safety and it could cut collisions by 30% and road deaths by 20% if mandated as, uh, as standard equipment on cars. It would also help the environment because we, we heard earlier that this is also an important concern in, as it would uh, reduce CO2 emissions. And um, based on different trials that have taken place, the, driver, um, like, the drivers like the technology and understand its usefulness. And of course, it would also um, help avoid speeding tickets. Um, the technologies that are mandated by, by the Commission work better together. So that's why we, we saw that huge life-saving potential of the package as a whole. Um, is the same with, with uh, different uh, technologies combined. For example, aut automated emergency braking would, uh, works best at lower speeds. So if ISA is also mandated, then AAB would have more, more opportunities for preventing crashes in, in the first place. And also when, when crashes are unavoidable, um, having ISA fitted on the car would um, would mean that the protection systems inside the car for, for car occupant uh, protection would work better at, um, at lower speeds. It is also a building block for automation. We, we heard about automation earlier and we also heard that self-driving cars should, not, uh, should be respecting traffic rules. Um, of course, we couldn't imagine a, a car uh, driving on its own and passing on the red light or speeding through the city, through the city. so of course we, we need ISA as a prerequisite for, uh, for automation. 
However, it might take a, a long time till, um, till automated cars will be on the road, so ISA is available today and it could, could save lives um, already. Um, most of our work on uh, our policy work um, refers to developing uh, positions on different pieces of legislation, going and meeting with policymakers, explaining the benefits of different technologies um, based on scientific arguments and, and good practice. But sometimes we also have to, to work against um, attempts to, to weaken safety um, proposals. And this is a, a recent example where we joined different uh, safety organizations such as uh, uh, the Cyclist Federation, the Victim uh, Organization, um, European Traffic Police in, um, in stopping an attempt from the industry on, uh, this time to, to weaken the proposals. If you want to read our letter to, to the MEPs and the member states, it's available on our website. Um, there are also other proven technologies that do not necessarily require an active system to intervene in order to prevent um, collisions to happen. Um, a safe cabin design, for example, would have a significant impact on road safety, um, especially when we talk about trucks and buses. We know that at the moment, um, a driver in a truck will, um, will not see um, um, cyclists and pedestrians around the vehicle because of the blind spots um, um, around trucks. So one of the new proposals from the commission that we strongly support is um, improved direct vision by, uh, by modifying the, the cabin and increasing the, the size of the glass so the, the driver can have a direct view of, um, of the road users around the vehicle. Uh, there has also been research showing that uh, the reaction time of drivers is much increased if they have a direct view instead of um, seeing uh, through, through screens or, or different sensors that are also being uh, proposed for, for mandatory fitment. And finally, because um, a lot of today's topic is passive safety, there are also um, um, elements that will help uh, the passengers inside the car and the ones outside um, suffer less, cons less um, serious consequences in the case of um, unavoidable collisions. And there are new proposals from the Commission um, mandating updates in, in uh, uh, crash tests, in, uh, in the standards for crash tests. Um, for example, for, for pedestrian and cyclist uh, windscreen hits, the test um, should increase the, the size of, um, of the windscreen where the, the dummy is hitting the, the screen. Um, for frontal crash protection updates, uh, the Commission is proposing to remove the current exemptions. So, um, currently, SUVs and the light commercial vehicles, such as um, small vans, city vans, uh, do not have to, to pass this frontal crash uh, test in order to, to be approved. Um, and also, to the side crash protection um, Test a new uh, pole side impact test is being um, proposed. This is already uh, a t test uh, done by Euro NCAP in order to to award the uh, stars to to vehicles for based on their safety. Um, we heard already the the average um, age of the vehicle fleet is uh, 11 years across Europe. Our information is that in Greece, um, the age is 14 years old, but it might, uh, it might not be correct, and it might be 16, as we heard earlier. Um, so the vehicle fleet renewal is a very long process, and in order to, to enjoy benefits of safety technology, this uh, technology should be mandated as soon as possible. The new general safety regulation could have a major impact and could have a similar impact on road safety as uh, seat belts had when they were first introduced. Um, new mandatory uh, safety measures mean, mean also more, more life saves and injuries prevented. 
these were my uh, conclusions, but at the very end, I want to to finish with, with a call for action and a request from ETSC, because the work here is not done. I've presented here uh, today the, um, the proposals that the Commission has put forward. They are not yet legislation. They still need to be voted in the European Parliament. And uh, currently, the, the IMCO committee, the responsible committee in the European Parliament, is uh, discussing the, the report on vehicle safety measures, and the vote is planned for February. Um, so if you also think that it's important to have these safety technologies mandated now, um, we ask you to, to contact your MEPs and, uh, and tell them to, to vote for a strong proposal and um, not, to, not to weaken um, uh, the package. That was it from my side. Thank you.